up everyone I'm Steph and this is the first vlog that I'm making about the polycystic ovary syndrome that I'm trying to uh, solve and my journey along the IVF the in vitro fertilization this is going to be a vlog when I am going to talk a lot so feel free to go directly to the part of the vlog that you are more interested about uh, that's gonna be that's an index just on the information box just down here and I have created a playlist about all the vlogs uh, that I'm making on this um, topic so you can check them out in here as usual in the information uh, button over there my problem started in the summer of 2015 uh, right after my wedding when I noticed that I started to skip periods my cycles have never been like super super precise they used to last like 35 30 35 40 days depending on how much I was stressed and how lean I used to be because I've always been involved in sports so I've always been uh, kind of muscular and uh, very lean when I was a teenager I used to skip some period or uh, have them very long uh, also like 50 days apart so at the very beginning I wasn't so uh, concerned about it but then in like six months time I had only two periods so that made me think that probably something wasn't going okay after like one year of blood checks and scans and things like that here in Reading uh, the gynecologist that was following me told me that I had um, the polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, known also as, as PCOS this is not a disease it's something that sometimes happens to women and we don't know why so basically you may or may not have periods but basically you sort of don't ovulate or you don't ovulate all the time meaning that you've got follicles in your ovaries but instead of have them like maturing and releasing an egg they just stay there they they become a sort of cysts and they stay there in the ovaries the good news which is also a sort of a bad news is that i fall into the lean side of the the pcos because pcos is not like a syndrome that's it it's it covers a variety a wide range of nuances of this this, this syndrome so you can have like a very very heavy pcos syndrome or like a, a lean sort of syndrome like mine so sometimes my ovaries look like they have they are a polycystic sort of uh, ovaries and some months they don't look like that so we don't know what the fuck is happening and i keep not ovulating and therefore i don't have any periods but sometimes when you have pcos you don't have ovulation but you have periods but i don't have periods either because the lining in the uterus is too thin and this is can might be caused by pcos so i ended up in a situation where i've been tested and my hormones are okay so the pcos that i have is not so heavy to mess up my hormones we thought i had hypothalamic amenorrhea which is a um, lack of period because your uh, hypothalamus don't trigger the right boots to your body to you know push and and make the, the the cycle the whole cycle happen and so your body is shutting down everything that's a sort of a surplus and your body is keeping only what it needs to survive but this is not my uh, my case again because my when you have hypothalamic amenorrhea your hormones are all over the place whether high or low or whatever during the cycle your 
uh, hormones go up and down, mine are just flat. And this allows me to have a healthy, normal life, so I don't have any other problems, but I don't have also any periods, and I don't ovulate. And this is a bloody mystery. The gynecologist try to make me ovulate during uh, the last year. They put me on a metformin, which is a medicine that uh, diabetic people used to have. But uh, studies have shown that they, uh, this, this metformin can have also a good impact on PCOS. They tried to uh, push my ovulation with uh, different drugs. So I had one cycle of clomiphene, which gave me the worst headache I've ever experienced in my life is what it was dreadful and it didn't work we tried a cycle of femara which didn't work and then they doubled the dose of, of femara and again it didn't work so also the gynecologist was like we don't know why you don't ovulate and we also can't take any other actions because sometimes they do surgery to remove the cysts inside the ovaries but it's it's risky because sometimes my ovaries have cysts or follicles and sometimes they don't so eventually the gynecologist told me that a pregnancy could fix this but how can I get pregnant if I don't ovulate and if I don't have any periods? So they proposed to try the IVF, which is the in vitro fertilization. The first cycle of this IVF, given our conditions, is totally free. So the NHS, thank you NHS, is paying for this very expensive treatment. I am going to go through this in a month time. This is why I am doing this blog, because I want to document everything that's going uh, to happen to me in the hope that this can help someone else. Because the society sometimes give you this, this, this social pressure, even if you don't care about it, it's sneaky and it gets inside your mind and tries to make you feel guilty. Somebody I really know well told me that I am broken and they asked me why nobody can fix me. So I have my work, I am very good at doing what I do, I feel proud of what I am and making a baby won't make me a better person in the sense that if I decide not to have a baby or if I don't want to have a baby or if I cannot have a baby that doesn't take me anything out of me and sometimes I feel bad anyways because I cannot grant my husband the right of being a father but thank god medicine and technology is uh, helping me out with that i don't want to think that i'm making if if it happens that i'm making a baby because i want to fix my cycle and my body which is exactly what is going to happen so I am really motivated to go through this IVF and have a baby also because that's gonna help me regain part of myself in a way the first stages of the IVF uh, at the moment are the following uh, first of all, you got your blood checked. Then you've got a scan 
to make sure that your ovaries and everything down there is okay. And third, you have uh, an appointment with a nurse that's going to explain to you how the therapy is going to, uh, to be about and what you have to do and what you have expect, etc, etc, etc. I had my blood checked for, uh, I have to read it, anti-mullerian hormone. That's a test that basically tells you how many eggs you have left. If for your age you have enough storage in, in terms of follicles and potential eggs, they are going to give me a humongous quantity of hormones to make my uh, follicles mature and release eggs as many as possible. So the next step is to have a, a scan and I am going to talk about this in another uh, session. Uh, let's catch up in my next vlog.